Welcome to another Terranscape's new release video. This video features an expansion to the existing trench pieces. The trench pieces are cast in a resin shell with, uh, and they're backed with a expanded foam. And I'm using a, a pretty high density foam now. This is uh, eight pounds per cubic feet, which if you know anything about foams is fairly dense, but I still uh, coat the mold with a uh, plastic resin to make sure I pick up all the small detail. And one of the customers who had purchased a set previously wanted an additional piece added in. The customer was requesting that it include a bunker entrance. And the uh, uh, so this is a door that leads into an underground, uh, I don't know what you want to say, shielded area, I suppose. And uh, But wanted it to exist as part of the line itself. Originally, I thought I might need to make a separate piece behind the line and he really wanted it to be something fairly simple that he could integrate into a linear trench line as part of a diorama and I thought that was a, a good compromise as it makes it a little bit easier and a little bit more versatile of a piece. So the piece basically juts out a little bit more than the regular uh, trench pieces and then I've built it up a little bit to kind of give it that impression that there is sort of a reinforced area here and give it a little more believability that this door is leading into something and then down. Of course, if you were making a, a really large uh, trench set, you know, this could be set inside of the uh, major trench line with a couple end caps around it to sort of seal it up and, and make it a, a more of a fortified centerpiece. But, uh, you know, for simple play, this works pretty well. He also wanted me to do a, some lanterns hung from some wooden posts. And so I uh, pulled together, sculpted a couple... Uh, ideas and ended up casting these little lanterns here and then I've hung them on basswood and the basswood is inserted directly into the actual uh, plastic and foam of the trenches uh, to give it a little bit of oh I'm sorry this isn't basswood this is balsa wood uh, so anyway to give it a little bit of rigidity a little structure but you know this is of course a little bit of a fragile piece here so I uh, actually I'd like to show you a close-up of that and then also a close-up of a freestanding one so I can talk about that more so here you can see a close-up of the lanterns and um, how they're mounted on the wood with the crossbar that gives it a little extra support and, and does meet the back of the trench wall. And you can also see here a good close-up of the door. And the door's been uh, framed and recessed into the wall a little bit with a more reinforced header joint. And uh, you, you can see that I omitted the hinges here as a, a fortification would have hinges really behind the wall so that they couldn't be easily accessed by uh, uh, enemies and, of course, the doorknob there. And uh, here you can see a close-up of the lantern not mounted on the wall. You can see uh, the cage that I added to the glass uh, as well as the length of the support arm so you can get that sense that it sticks into the wall about a you know, quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more. And I've just given the lantern a very simple paint job uh, with a little bit of a wash to give it a, a rusted, uh, little weathered look, but nothing overly complicated. And it's quite a small piece to paint. And so as a quick recap on the uh, set in general, uh, oh, this piece is approximately, I think, oh, I can't remember, I think it's seven and a half inches long. So it's a nice wide straight to add to the set and uh, will probably be included with... Um, at least one of the short uh, uh, platforms that you could add to it so that 28 to 32 millimeter figures could stand on top and fire over the sandbags. I did try to raise up the sandbags just a little bit, so this piece is maybe, I don't know, a quarter inch, half an inch higher than the other pieces, but then when I set them together, I realized it doesn't really look tremendously higher than the others. So, I don't know, visually it fits in quite nicely. Uh, but of course, if you haven't seen the trench pieces before, you should go to terranscapes.com to see them. And you can see um, other videos as well in this uh, YouTube collection that discusses more about these firing platforms, how they can be used, and some of the other trench sections that are available for the set. A second new addition uh, coming out in this weekend on the website will be these new rock barriers. I realized when the new Warhammer 40K rule, uh, whoops, the Warhammer Fantasy rules came out, that uh, line of sight was pretty much open unless the obstacle actually blocks true line of sight. And this has been true in 40K for quite a long time, and several other gaming systems use true line of sight as well. So I wanted to create a barrier that really effectively 
and very comfortably blocked line of sight to models that are, this is a, a 30 millimeter scale AT43 miniature, uh, but you can see very easily that this is going to block uh, models on 40 millimeter bases. This is going to block probably even a lot of uh, small monsters. I think the uh, Dark Elf Hydra will hide behind this very easily, although obviously some of the larger ones like Dragons and Giants won't be able to hide behind it. But uh, uh, you can get the, I think, um, I wouldn't be surprised if even a Dreadnought in 40K would be completely concealed behind this. That's how tall these are. These um, are cast in plaster, and uh, they are basically cast in plaster as two halves, and then I join them. So you know, there is a bit of a seam at the top, which I've puttied in and filled, and I think overall it's fairly uh, not really very... Um, uh, observable, but you know, it's it's always a challenge to get things, especially when you have such a rocky crag, to get that to line up exactly and to be uh, totally flush with each other. And then when I've painted them, I've been working, you know, more and more as I do uh, rock surfaces to add in more colors to them so that I can give them more of a realistic rock look as, you know, no rocks are really just gray or just red or just brown. So I blended in some colors in some of these areas to give it some of that multi-mineral appearance and then just dry brushed out some of the uh, actual external, you know, highlights to, to pop that rock's texture off, which is really pretty dramatic. And then I've gone in and I've uh, you know, uh, flocked over it so that the flock will sit in some of the crevices and give it sort of that aged, you know, things are starting to kind of try to get a grip in some of the crocs and crags and start forming some uh, new living habitats as is so common in the real world. And I'll tell you, let me see if I can give you a quick close-up of some of those features. So here you can see a really good close-up of the rock texture, which is very intricate and has lots and lots of detail as well as some of those little nooks and crannies where some of the flock has settled giving it a I think a, a much more realistic biological feel and you also get a little sense of some of that color variation that's in the rock so as a final thought on these what I was really trying to encompass was something that'd be relatively inexpensive these don't take a terribly long time to put together and to paint so something inexpensive and large that people could purchase to place on their table to give really improved tactical variations and in fact these actually do a fairly good job of coming together so that you could create a a longer wall fairly believable believably and uh, one of the the caveats to this though is that because it is cast in plaster um, these are fairly heavy, so you know, shipping overseas is going to get maybe a little expensive, so these might be something a little bit more appropriate for domestic orders. Um, but what I find with overseas shipping is the larger the order, the more the cost per piece drops. So once you get to a certain threshold, adding in another pound or two of plaster isn't probably going to push it too far. So it's going to going to vary from customer to customer. But I wanted to just give you a quick look at that. You, of course, you can always visit the Terranscapes website so that you can see detailed photos of these pieces up close. And you can see some of the uh, pictures of the uh, trench pieces up close as well. So you can get a better perspective on exactly what level of detail there is and what they're priced at. I uh, hope you enjoyed taking a look at this video. And uh, stay tuned for more uh, for another upcoming new release.